What I thought we would do tonight is a little bit of upper body, arms and shoulders, upper back, all that kind of good stuff. Especially if we're doing a lot of desk work or just a lot of driving work or whatever. And uh, hopefully we'll help open all of that up. If you have any other things that you want to throw in there as well, give me a shout now so that I have time to process and think and try and see how we can integrate those together. Happy with arms, upper shoulders, all that kind of stuff. Lovely. What we'll do then, we're going to go for 90 seconds. We're going to start off with some tabletops. With our tabletops, we are looking for hands to be as close together as we can while getting good shoulder range of motion. Feet will be together, knees together, and from there, we're going to lift our chest up, pull our tummy tight, and really try and pinch the shoulders together. If the hands are too close, we won't be able to retract the shoulders. If they're uh, super duper wide, we'll get loads of retraction, and, but we might not get enough stimulus. So play around in your hand position, see what feels good, what gives you a good position. I'm going to go here for 90 seconds, which is quite a lot of seconds. Three, two, one, off we go. Really trying to pull that tummy in as we go up. Pinching your shoulders back. Driving those hips nice and high, chest nice and high, shoulders pulled right the way back. Our arms here are nice and locked. We're gonna get good blood flow into those shoulders. Just moving in and out of position. There we go. <sighs> good. Just hypothetically, in case you haven't been moving, we are moving. It's not just a hold. No problem if you did hold though, but extra gains for you. Nice, about 10 more seconds. Love the juggling. Okay, next up then, we have our twisting bear. So we're gonna be almost in like a plank position with a nice high hips. From there, we'll step forward and through with our left foot. That means our left hand stays on the floor. And the priority here is to get the chest above the armpit, which might mean that all we do is reach that arm straight up in the air. That's totally cool. But if you're able to keep that nice high chest, then we can start opening up. But what I do wanna see is that chest stay below the shoulder and then we're back in our tabletop position again. See the difference, Sarah? So instead of here, we're trying to get that shoulder all the way up there. We're gonna go continuously again for 90 seconds, swapping from arm to arm. Three, two, one, off we go. Trying to breathe out at the top of your movement. <sighs> trying to rotate through the shoulder. Open up that armpit as much as possible. Really screwing that arm into the floor. Nice. Nice feeling that up the bicep. Feeling it across the chest. Nice high, open hips as well. Basically getting that body up, high to the sky. Nice. Good work. These first two, a little bit of work, 
You can say getting that blood flow into the part of the body that we're trying to work tonight. So we can get more out of our stretches. Our muscles, when they're warm, they're like elastic. They stretch that bit better. You don't really try to stretch a cold elastic band, it's just gonna snap. Lovely job. And let's cool that there. Beautiful. Now, next up, we're gonna go. What was that? KFT. Lovely. Okay, a little bit of interference there. No problem. We're gonna go into our uh, static stretch. We'll be on our bum, hands behind us. Again, as close together as our mobility will allow. So, for example, if I was here and my arms were locked and I wasn't able to pull my shoulders back there, then I need to go a little bit wider. But if I'm able to pull my shoulders back, keep my arms straight, I can work my way until my fingers are touching. If I can get into this position with my fingers touching, my arms straight and my shoulders pull back, then we'll start working our way forward and increase the intensity of the stretch. But I want you to be hyper aware of the elbows. If you start to feel any discomfort in your, if the bony part of your elbow, back away, back away, back away, back away. Okay, let's go for two minutes. That's about a minute longer than anyone wants to. Let's go in three, two, one, off we go. Nice. Taking that time to stay engaged. We're here to get some good mobility in tonight. So let's focus in on your positions. See if you can lock those elbows, squeezing the triceps, pinch together the shoulder blades so that chest is pushed forward. And from there, bring those hands as close together as you can muster. Feeling that stretch through the bicep. Feeling those upper back muscles almost cramping. And if you're at that stage, fingers touching, shoulders pulled back, start to work those hips further forward. Sitting here beside a furnace. The muscles are so warm and elastic, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Doing stretches in a sauna. <laughs> Top tip. <laughs> if you ever want to get super flexible, go to a sauna. Sauna mobility. Sauna. Sauna mobility. Nice. Totally normal if you start to get like tingly sensations down your arm. Don't back out of it. That's just part of it. It's just your nervous system going mad. Useful to understand how the body kind of responds to what we're doing. Our muscles love long stretches. They thrive off it. They really benefit from that uh, time uh, where they are being encouraged to get longer. Joints are the same. They need time, they need to be warm, and they enjoy that extra long static stretch. They can back out of that. Or is the nervous system responds really well to trickery? It likes to sort of be fooled into uh, being longer. Okay, now, hypothetically, if I was having a complete mind blank, I did have this entire session written down. But that's okay, we're gonna go. On the all fours. From there, we're going to reach a hand across and bring the knee down towards the, the sorry, the elbow. Studied at Human Biology University. This is your elbow. This is your knee. And from there, really tuck that chin and pull the shoulder down to your hip. It's going to feel kind of awkward, but you're trying to set this bit, the bit between your ear and your shoulder, onto the floor. 
and really open up your back and spine. We're gonna go 90 seconds on each side. Let's start that in five, four, three, two, one. Off you go. As you get deeper into the stretch, keep trying to pull your shoulder to your hip, tucking that chin and curling the spine. The more you can curl your spine here, the better. Trying to keep that tummy pulled in. It's easy to try and relax the tummy as you go for more range, but try to keep it engaged. And we'll swap over sides. And begin. We're trying to keep the time between stretches here relatively short. We're just going from one to the other, trying to get some good work done, being efficient with our time. Getting deep into those upper back muscles. Focusing on nice calm breathing. We want to stay nice and calm with our breathing so our body stays relaxed. The body is stressed, it's going to tighten up and stiffen up. We're going to try and encourage it that it feels comfortable enough so we can get nice long, deep movements. Nice. And ease yourself out of that one. a lot of these stretches if you're in them deep enough you'll probably feel a little bit like a sloth coming out of them that's totally okay you're better to come out of them slowly rather than moving suddenly and then uh, tweaking something okay next up then we're going to go and extend the back a little bit so you can do this on your elbows or you can do it on your hands basic idea is the same we're going to try to squeeze our feet together thumb and all is nice and tight and from there we're pulling our shoulders back and we're trying to push our chest forward and up. Same idea if you're on your hands, forward and up with the chest. If you can get your arms all the way up, that's cool. But I want you to focus on that sort of middle back upwards rather than just cranking your lower back. That's not gonna do as much good. Just focus on the middle to upper back. Let's go a minute in that position. We're gonna go three, two, one, and begin. You think about your sternum. We're trying to get it forward and through as far as possible. Shoulder blades are pulled down. Easy to let them rest up towards the ears. We wanna push them down towards our hip bones. The muscles underneath them might start to cramp up a little bit, that's okay. Keep pinching them back and together.
that's just a I pose that then we'll go knees a wee bit wide sit that bum back towards the heels and reach the arms as far forward as you can just chill out here for about 30 seconds just relax in that lower back taking pressure off the hips starting to open up those shoulders a little bit This one might feel a little bit awkward stick with me on it though if you relax into it you're gonna get the most intense upper back stretch ever on our backs we're gonna roll ourselves all the way up and over you might need to use your hands to help with this if not it'll look like that and if you do you just use those hands to kind of whoop, support your hips we're going to try and use the weight of our legs to curl our back as we aim to set our knees towards the floor. Notice here my feet are up off the floor so I can really relax deep and curl this part of my spine. The more I curl it, the more intense that stretch. We're going to go here for 90 seconds. Three, two, and a half. <laughs> One and begin. Setting that chin on your chest. Curl on that upper back. You may even find a little side to side. Helps to ease any kinks. And then settle in the middle. Focus on slightly shallow breaths, letting those hips come as far over as possible. It's tempting to stay out of the stretch, but we want to come deeper and deeper and deeper into the stretch. Bringing those knees down as far as possible. Trying to get them towards the floor. Right. Okay. And ease yourself out. Wonderful. Nice. Okay, so similar to our cat stretch from earlier, you can do this with your hands up on something or you can do it on the floor if you don't have something I'll show you. The basic idea of both. It'll be easier to see contrast if I show you up high here. So we're having our hands about shoulder width apart. We're walking our knees back and we're going to try to engage Engage that tummy so we're in like a hollow shape and then press down towards the floor. So we're keeping that tummy on rather than just letting it relax. We're going to try and keep that tummy shape open or on, sorry, so we can open up those shoulders. Same idea if you're doing this in the floor. Try and keep that tummy on as you open up those shoulders. We'll go here for about a minute. Just ready? Three, two, one, and begin. Yeah. Nice, letting those shoulders shrug, keeping that tummy engaged, squeeze it like you're doing a plank. Really let those shoulders open up, those lats stretch. Trying to drive the outside edge of your, sh of your armpit towards the floor. 
Your big muscles really starting to stretch out. Careful you're not cranking your neck down towards the floor. It can help to look up towards your fingers. Keeping that tummy on. Driving the chest down. Creating that angle at the shoulder. Great one for your handstand position, for your overhead press. Just for keeping full range of motion in the shoulder. And ease yourself out. Lovely. Lovely. How are we all getting on there? It's good. Jolly. Jolly good. Okay. So. Let's go on our tummy. I'm going to get B to show you this one. Catch and stretch. So B is going to reach one arm, uh, actually if you look back. B starts on her back, arms out in a cross. From there she's going to roll, roll over. Nice, so now her elbow is under her armpit and her other arm goes ahead. Lovely. <laughs> so she's just pressing down on her shoulder there. And um, if that's not intense enough, what she could do, she's, good. she's lying on her left arm. She could pull her left knee up and out towards the side. Okay, that help, helps to increase the intensity, especially if that tummy is on. If you can slip a pizza underneath your tummy, it's a good sign. Okay, we'll do 90 seconds on each side. Starting in five, four, three, Two, one, and begin. Oh, oh my goodness, that's tight. <laughs> Jakers, oh boys. So hopefully you're gonna feel this kind of in the delt or almost inside the shoulder, or you might even find it right around in your shoulder blades, around the back of your uh, shoulder. Depends on where you're tight. It's okay. Sometimes the phrase, you'll feel it where you need to feel it is appropriate. Just letting that shoulder fall to the floor, easing your armpit towards your elbow Try not to choke yourself out. And just letting that body sink deep. And we'll swap it over. Ideally here, the arm that we're lying on, the palm is up towards the roof. Controlled breathing, keeping the tummy on, ribs are pulled down towards your hips, sinking deep into that shoulder. advantages of being at home is that you do have a warm place but also you might have something along the lines of for example 
a sofa, a bed, something you can hook your toes under. Now, why that's useful is that now we're gonna start using those muscles that we've kind of stretched out just to solidify the position we've worked on. So I'm gonna hook my toes underneath my sofa here. Arms are gonna go out in front of me and I'm gonna start by lifting my arms, then my head and neck, and then I'm gonna try and peel myself up. And then I'm going to set myself down in that same order. I'm going to do 10 reps, taking my time to really think about the order those muscles are working in rather than just cranking on the low back like so. 10 reps, off we go. And then after all that hard work, back into your kind of basic tuck position. With knees out, bum push back to your heels, arms look forward just to try and take that little bit of pressure off. I find with my knees that little bit narrower, it helps me kind of round the lower back and really relax it. So they're apart, but they're not like super wide. Final thing we're going to do is kind of along the same lines and is very useful for handstands but also just for learning how to move our arms independently of our body. Ideally we would do this with some kind of brush shaft or something that we can hold our hands at the same distance apart but we can also do it without or with like a t-shirt or something. Like so. I'm going to lie on the floor and I'm going to form the best handstand shape that I possibly can. Which means I'm going to go heels together, I'm going to tuck my pelvis, I'm going to pull my ribs down, and now my chin is automatically on the floor. So I'm in this really nice shape, and hopefully, we could even slip a hand under that tummy because it's tucked rather than relaxed. From there, I can widen my hands to make it a little bit easier or I can narrow my hands to make it harder. Staying engaged in my body then, I'm going to lift my hands up and bring them back down. We're aiming for like a five second hold 
and we'll do three to five reps depending on how difficult that is for you. So heels together, hips tucked, ribs pulled down and from there start to lift the hands. As you go through that, does anyone find that their elbows try to bend or that their lower back relaxes and their tummy sets onto the floor? Those are things to be aware of and try to fight and work against. It's a simple exercise. Simple doesn't mean easy. In fact, simple as a trap it makes you think that you don't have to work hard. Whew. Lovely. Good job, everybody. Well done on shoulder mobility tonight. Hopefully we got all the little kinks worked out there. We we're pretty thorough with our stuff. Nice, Alison. Great range of motion there, that's fantastic. Lovely. Cool, well, go have a lovely evening. Uh, turn the lights down, put on some candles, read a book, listen to some good music. Have a great sleep, and I'll see you all soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Good night. Sure.